we say hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Financial Education Après Cours. Thank you for being here. So what uh, Andy and I met uh, about an hour ago to go over everything and make sure we had everything uh, ready for the Après Cours. And uh, the agreement was to look at it in a four, point, uh, a four point session. The first one would be the presentation of the teaching resource or the material analysis. I renamed it. Instead of grille d'analyse didactique, I figured naming it teaching resource or teaching material analysis would be sufficient in, uh, in naming it. Uh, I think it, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory once, uh, once you see it. So there are two sections in the uh, grid itself, the table itself, the cross-sectional one and the vertical one. So we'll look at the two sections. Then I want to show you what, where to find all the references that the table uh, makes, where you can find them in the program. And I have, we have a sample analysis to show. So we have a sample use of the grid. And then of course, if there are questions afterwards, uh, we will take them of course, if there are any. So, the teaching resource or the teaching material analysis table looks like this, okay? Now it's a little blurry, but it's set, what you have essentially is uh, an eight section, if you will, or an eight point uh, checklist when you wanna use material. Now, if we start, let's start at the very beginning, someone who comes in and teaches financial education for the very first time, and doesn't have workbooks or textbooks to work with, let's say. That person would have to then probably build or gather resources according to the program and the DD and the DD and DED, sorry, and make sure that they teach, uh, they teach what they need to teach and evaluate what they need to evaluate. I would say that that would be, I would call it the most unfortunate case scenario. <laughs> Let's not call it the worst case scenario. But if I, I come in and I have never taught this before and I have zero material, then I'm gonna have to scramble and find material. I may ask other teachers that may have taught it before. Uh, and if I'm lucky and if I'm, I'm, uh, I will get you know, their help in finding material. But if we made it, uh, if we looked from the very basis, I have nothing and I've never taught this before, then this chart becomes a very good checklist. But it would have to, uh, you'd have to go through a lot, a lot, a lot of material. If you have taught this before, this is possibly just going to be validating whether or not you choose material according to uh, what you're supposed to, uh, to choose from. And if you have material already, let's say you have a workbook, a few workbooks, or you have a textbook that you like using, uh, then you will very likely know what's missing. You'll know what you need to research into, and then you'll go and pick uh, material that, that you, you'll research and, and you will find online or in books or whatever, even articles from newspapers or whatever. So whichever type of resource you have to go through and you want to check validity of, you can use this, uh, this tool. The reason is, is that it's made according to the program. It's built with the program in mind. And you'll notice that you have you know, program vocabulary in there, okay? So whatever you wanna check the validity for, you can go through this list. So if we went and looked at the program of study, from page 34 onward, all the way to page 60 something, we have the, uh, the, the table where we have the competency takes a position. We have the issue concerning goods and services. We have the four concepts for each issue and then the, no the knowledge related to the financial issue. And that's what we covered last week in our presentation. However, for each of these knowledges, if we call them that way, we have a set of specifics. And that's also taken from the, the program of study. So if you've looked in, if you've, uh, if you've ever taken a look, then you know this is familiar territory. 
And for example, in consuming goods and services under advertising, I would have four specific elements, the definition of the term marketing, the goals of advertising, the laws that govern business practices in advertising, regulated practices. And I have that for each and every knowledge that is in that particular financial issue. And in this case, we have two pages worth. Okay, and it, this is all exactly, okay, exactly like that uh, in the program. Then if we go uh, to the next section, page 48 and onward, we have pursuing an education. We have three concepts and four knowledge. The four knowledge are here with their specifics and same for entering the workforce, the three concepts and the six knowledges that are detailed around here. So this is so far nothing, nothing new, uh, nothing too extraordinary. Uh, careful, I'm going to go back quickly. I don't mean to make anyone dizzy. All right. So the tool is really made with the, pro the program in mind. So you have here a portion that is dedicated to the identification of the resource that you want to look into. So you would put the title in there the type of teaching, your target audience, the socioeconomic characteristics. So this top portion you can fill uh, for each of the resources you want to analyze, for example. Under number four is really where everything that's program related uh, or the more specific anyways, where they come in. As you can see, there are a few lines missing, but I think you can follow nonetheless. You have the two courses right here, 5101, 5102. You have the three uh, financial issues, one for the first course, two for the second course. And in each, you have your concepts, your knowledge, and your specifics. So consumption, debt, purchasing power, and savings for consuming goods and services. Financing, qualifications, and training for pursuing an education, and taxation remuneration, sorry, and work for entering the workforce. For each, you have the knowledge. So you have eight here, five here, and then six. And then you have specifics for each of the knowledge. So in advertising, there are four specific items. So if we go back and take a look, advertising, there are four specifics that are pretty much making that knowledge to be acquired, the, what makes it uh, important. So the more you can cover, actually, the more you should cover in here, huh? uh, you should cover all of this, the more you have in your particular resource, the better off you are if the resource is something in advertising. If you're looking into budget planning, then you may have a resource that deals with budget planning and you would have to make sure that the three specifics of budget planning are covered and so on and so forth. Now, how do you use the chart itself? It's really a question of checking the boxes. So if I'm looking at planning and education and I'm looking at financing, I found a website that I think is helpful. So I'm going to go through all of this and then I'll see if I have my two elements of financing. Well, actually it's one element striking a balance between family work and school. And I have to look at all my specifics and see if they're all found in the, the resource I found. And then I will determine whether or not that resource or that material is enough, uh, is good enough for me to use or not. Okay, so that's for the first part. <coughs> Sorry, the concepts for each financial issue. On the other side of the page, on the right-hand side, you have uh, under number five, whether or not the material is in alignment 
with the program itself, more generally speaking, if you will. In this case, we're looking at a more vertical analysis, a top-down type of analysis, starting with the course objectives, developing cr critical thinking skills in managing personal finances, and developing self-confidence and awareness for financial well-being. So again, I see if the resource I found goes, at, goes along with the course objectives. Okay, it may go along with one or the two of them. And then I look at the key features of the competency. I have four key features, assesses, perspective, examines and considers the legal aspects. Okay, I check my boxes. Then I look at my compulsory elements. Do I cover the financial issue itself, the concepts and the knowledge is related to the financial issue? So for numbers four and five, it's really program, program uh, related. So you go to your program, you go to your document, make sure that all is there, that it jives, if you will. And you check the boxes along. Then you have six, seven, and eight. In, in this case, we're looking at the overall quality of information or the reason for choosing that material, even the cost, because some material may have to be bought, purchased. So you look at it, the validity, objectivity, relevance, uh, durability or continuity, organization and reliability of the, of the sources. The source itself, but also the sources that are uh, within the document that you're looking into. And then the rationale, did you choose it for the relevance uh, to the learner's reality, the clarity of instructions and directives, the range of options, the variety of examples, and then you determine if it's cost effective or not, non-cost effective. So as you can see, the chart itself really does cover a lot of uh, information that you must consider when you want to bring in something to complement or supplement your basic material or your teaching. So far, are there any questions? No hands. Andy, do you want to add something? Did I forget anything? Oh, Julie, you, uh, you went over it uh, really well. Um, I don't have any questions about it. I thought that, you know, thinking about uh, from a from a from a curriculum standpoint, mm -hmm. um, you know, being a new course with you know more and more younger teachers coming into the program into into teaching, you know, it seems like a document that a um, more experienced teacher would do like automatically. You know, when they're reading their resources, they've Let's say they're watching a, a TV show and they see some interesting things coming in current events, and you know they run through this checklist mentally. Um, yeah. and it's a really so. Therefore, this is a handy document that outlines, you know, all of your your key points, the compulsory elements, and then ways to analysis and to keep track, right? Uh, and, and and I would see that I'd see really I, I think it's really helpful. Um, I I wouldn't like. Um, as an experienced teacher, I would question having to run through this document for every single thing that comes through, uh, you know, over over my desk. Mm -hmm. It becomes maybe a sort of an automatic uh, um, reaction in in terms of uh, yep. uh, in terms of evaluating uh, these materials. But it, for for gap analysis, it's dynamite. It's fantastic. So. Uh, I like the way you explained uh, how it can be used. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but feel free to come in anytime if you want to add something yeah. as I go. So as far as the document is concerned, as I, as I showed you and uh, explained, uh, it, all, it is all in the program. There's nothing in that tool that does not have uh, to do with the program of study. So the slides that are about, that are copied paste from the, uh, the program study are in there, uh, that it, they can be helpful. I mean, if you take this, this PowerPoint, we're gonna put it in the, uh, 
in the chat later, you can leave with it and you'll have, you'll have it handy in case you need it. You don't have to go to the actual program of study if you don't need to. It's in there. So that's why I put it in there. So you have the consuming goods and services, then you'll have the pursuing an education and the entering the workforce. Yes, Emily. I was just going to add a little bit to Andy's comment in the sense yes. that because these courses are so short, they're each 25 hours, um, this kind of tool could be helpful to make sure that you're like getting the most bang for your buck in terms of resources because you really have to kind of get through things quickly. So if you found something that covers like as many of the specifics as possible that you don't yep. need to supplement with other things, then it'll mm -hmm. be it'll be easier Absolutely. for the teacher and the students like in the sense of becoming a little bit more efficient and and uh yeah uh keeping track absolutely absolutely yeah because i think like the the there's so much to teach in these courses and it's all super interesting and stuff that our students like need that it'll be uh i think it'll be easy to kind of like find yourself like oh actually i have enough things to like teach for 50 yep. hours but like what do i really actually need what is the curriculum telling me i need and that could actually and you're you're giving me an idea that could even be something that you could look into with maybe the table of content of the material that you have let's say you have a textbook and you want to make sure to cover what is supposed to be covered and not run out of time then you could go through it with the grid and see what you really need to focus on and what you can leave behind for a while and then maybe come back to afterwards. So that's a good point. There are just so many hours in the available, absolutely. So the sample itself, this is, I mean, by, by no means is this my work, okay? I don't wanna take credit for, the only credit I can take is for having uh, done the translation and having, you know, having put it into a format that is workable. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, ironically, what took the most time was to put it into table form, because this is not necessarily a table that is just easy. You can't just fuse whatever you have to build tables and connect them. And it, it was a, a little bit of a puzzle. But a learning experience, another one. So that was fine. Uh, but this is something that count that comes from the presentation that was done in October. So again, this is not my complete, a whole 100% my doing, but rather uh, transposition and translation. So when they presented their sample to us, <clears throat> sorry, in October, and those that were there, maybe you'll remember having this uh, presented to us, they took an example of a resource that they uh, that they found for credit, the teaching of credit, uh, consumption and debt, and they had uh, they had given us the example uh, from the L'Office de Protection du Consommateur. So that was a website that was used. That's what you find at the top uh, top left. So the title of the resource is What Affects My Credit History? And you have the website that you can click on and go to. So the teacher who presented this to us had gone through this website, had probably looked at all the resources that were there. Uh, if it was a video, then again, watch the video and see as you go. And then they showed us how they just checked the boxes as they went. So in the teaching method, all three good target audience, was this well targeted for adult general education? And the, was there a socioeconomic characteristic? At the time there was, it was, it was adult learners. Uh, it was high revenue, but former insolvency and they were uh, all living in urban centers. So that was targeted to a group of students uh, that this teacher had, uh, had presented this to. What I mostly, uh, what I was mostly interested in was really section four, because I wanted to see how this could be used as a checklist to really determine whether or not material could be included or just should, should just be left aside. So um, if we look at the concepts, well, first of all, credit history has to do with consuming goods and services. So we're in the first financial issue where that means we're in the first course. 
So we can then forget about the two bottom ones. This chart really will focus on one particular thing. So that's where it would fit. And it does deal with consumption and debt. So that's covered, checks there. Nothing about savings, nothing about purchasing power in that particular, uh, in that particular resource. So under the concepts of consumption, debt, and so on, we have knowledges. And the knowledges that were mostly uh, covered here are characteristics of consumption and consumer credit. So for each, then uh, the teacher, I think her, if I remember her name was Ariane, Ariane looked into specifics and determined whether or not this was enough to be a supplementary resource. Now, you will notice that in the characteristics of consumption, only one box or one letter is checked out of seven, which statistically, mathematically doesn't look too good. But the rest of the letters, the rest of the material was covered in her uh, everyday material. So there was no problem there. So she needed to look at websites. She needed to show her students how to go in, onto websites to get information, uh, to get uh, the updates on whatever issues. And she showed them the OPC one, uh, knowing very well that this uh, website was updated regularly, what, had everything specific, that it was right on in terms of, of knowledge and in terms of the material that was presented. So nothing was just, you know, no one just flew by the seat of their pants putting this together. It is a, a reputable organization that made it. So the rest of the boxes don't check specific in the specifics, but that may, in this case, it's not a problem because they did check in the rest of the resources that she uses. Where it gets interesting is in the consumer credit. Because the website is really focused on the, what affects the credit history of someone and having uh, people in the group that have, gone, uh, that have gone through insolvency issues and so on and so forth, then of course the main focus will be on consumer credit. And in this case, out of eight boxes, six of them check and two don't. If we look at the next page in the uh, in the presentation, you'll notice that what I put in yellow, what I boxed in yellow is what is checked or highlighted in the chart. So characteristics of consumption is checked. And that is website, okay? The resources that provide information. So website discussion forums and so on. And then in the consumer credit, if we look at the, uh, the table, Everything but ENF. So again, I boxed it in yellow, A, B, C, D, G, and H. So the definition of the term credit, the main reason for using credit, the eligibility for credit, sorry, the insolvency and obtaining credit, content of credit contract and main types of credit contracts is covered in that video. So yay, this is great, this is valid, I'm happy, I found something interesting. However, what does it leave out? In that particular video, solutions and consequences of over indebtedness is not addressed, okay? It's left out, they focus on the other six points. Now, knowing this, I have a decision to make. The decision is, do I go ahead and use the material nonetheless and find something that addresses solutions, options, and consequences and bring it in as well? Or maybe is that particularly, is that in my, uh, in my basic material? So you have to really look at this from an organic standpoint saying, okay, I know what's there, there I know what's missing, but can I handle this? Can this be used nonetheless? Okay, so it doesn't disqualify the, the material because not all eight boxes are checked. It can really be uh, supplemented or, or complemented otherwise. So having taken a look at this particular section of my chart, I know what it covers specifically and what it doesn't cover. 
then I can move to the portion that talks about the competency, the objectives, the key features, and so on. And as you can see, there's a lot, a lot of yellow in that section, which means that there's a lot of these uh, boxes that check. I mean, first of all, the contribution towards the course objectives, the video or the, the website focus on the, the development of critical thinking skills and management of personal finances. It doesn't talk about self-confidence and awareness for financial well-being, but the point was from the beginning was to address credit history. So in this case, they were good. Then the key features of the competency uh, taking a position, we have to assess, examine, put position in perspective and considers the legal aspects. So three out of four check out. The compulsory elements are all there. So we're looking good here. Then the next part, which is the overall, uh, the overall qualities of the document or the material I bring in. Validity, reference, relevance, sorry, uh, continuity and reliability check, no problem. That's a good four out of six. Then the, the decision for choosing this was mostly on the relevance to the reality and the clarity of instructions or directives. The OPC usually gives pretty good, uh, pretty good directives and instructions and information on what they cover. And was it cost effective? In this case, it was because it was a website and it is a government publication, which is free of charge. So good for them. They found something that was very cost effective. You have a note section where you can hash out your pros and cons, see what, uh, what you noticed. Maybe write a few things that you did not necessarily have in the check boxes, but that you wanted to write. And as you can see here, advantages and disadvantages of this particular tool, the advantages are comprehensive learning activity for consumer credit and the disadvantages, completion requires more than 60 minutes recommended. So you would have to adjust there and doesn't offer options. So that famous, that infamous E and F, uh, the E especially. Now, since it doesn't cover solutions, then maybe I would have to look into another resource that covers that specifically, okay? And that's pretty much the idea behind the whole thing here. So as I said earlier, I'm giving you the blank version in the PowerPoint that you can use and you can distribute because this is, uh, this is a government document that was given to us uh, in the presentation, so it's not a problem. I will make sure that you receive it also in the PowerPoint of the presentation. We will add it in there. And you'll get this sample uh, just in case you need to go over it and uh, see how it's being used. So as you can see, this is a pretty self-explanatory uh, tool. Uh, it, it's pretty easy and it's not too time consuming to use. Uh, the most time consuming part is always uh, looking at the uh, look at the resources, watching the videos or going through the website or going through, you know, going through the process of finding material. But once we have the material and we want to validate whether or not it's going to be useful or, or we want to validate whether or not it fits or it's in accordance with the program, then the tool is pretty easy to use and it's pretty time, uh, to, it's, it's um, not too time consuming. So that was the goal of today's presentation. It was to uh, cover the tool and what we had as a sample for it. If you have any questions, uh, we are here for you. If you wanna go back on the presentation also and you have questions on uh, the presentation itself, so uh, if there are any questions regarding the presentation. It, just a comment. It's, um, yes. it's an amazing distillation of the program. So if you they were to show somebody, here's the, you know, you can read the program, which is always a good idea. Uh, but this is like a fantastic 
way to summarize yep. the key features and manifestations and competencies, everything, yep. you know, within that chart is just I really agree. well done. Thank you for mm -hmm. going to the trouble. Well, actually, the, as I said, translation. This, this was given from the ministry directly to us and I translated it for them, but this is, yeah, it, it, I find it a very useful tool. And as you said, it is very, very clear and it does take you right to the core of what you need to look into and what you need to understand. And that's absolutely true. I will make sure to give them, uh, your, uh, to, to extend the congratulations over to Ariane. Yes, um, Chantal. Yes, good afternoon. Quick question. Um, this tool that you showed us for the uh, financial education, does it exist for the other programs? Not that I know of. <laughs> Because yeah. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at this, and I mean, uh, I got a little bit late because I was looking mm -hmm. for the um, the link to join the session, and yes. uh, I took the program and I listened to what you said. I looked at the screen, and oh mm -hmm. my God! And uh, I mean, for my teachers, it would be great. For any teachers, it would be great to uh, to have something like that. Look, it's from what I know of. Okay, so Emily says there are any, uh, okay. Um, from what I know, this exists only for financial, this exercise was done for financial education only. And as I said, the tool does not belong to me, it belongs to, uh, to Ariane and the ministry team that came, uh, that came together and worked on this. However, if, if we could, as Equipe Shock, put together something um, in certain cases to help with the, uh, the appropriation of the program, this could be something that we could go from and then maybe build something uh, that would, uh, you know, going from there, branching out into a different direction in the appropriation of program, but that may be a, a tool that we could use or get inspired by. Because it, I, I do not, I haven't seen this in other uh, courses, no. Anyway, that, that's a good thing. Anyways, mm -hmm. we, we can look at that. I think so too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Emily. Yeah, to piggyback a little bit on that, Chantal, um, a few years ago, and Gail, you'll be able to add to this as well. A few years ago, EPC had created, um, had done like a whole workshop series on unpacking the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And so there was a template that came with that to help teachers kind of get familiar with um, like dig into the curriculums in depth. It didn't involve like the evaluation of online resources and like how how they might tie into the curriculum, but it was helpful for um, kind of really unpacking those really long ministry documents and, and finding the, the, the core pieces to focus on for sure. This is, I'll it's good that find it a link exists. for that. However, I wasn't there, so I, I had no idea, but this is good that it already exists and that the exercise was already done as far as unpacking the program. But let's say we did go with not even an in-between, but a combination of the two and inspire ourselves, you know, use this as an inspiration and maybe change things up or make it, I don't know, make it into a tool that can be uh, useful evaluation-wise as well. Maybe there's something we can do with it. Thank you for putting it in there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. But Chantal, you're, this is a good idea. It would be an interesting idea to, to pursue, that's for sure. Well, it's probably something, um, Gail, you're still on the EPC with Henri uh, from Eastern Shores. Anyways, I'm gonna speak with Henri and uh, so that we keep that maybe in line for work, not right now, but you know, to put it on the, sur la planche à design, like we say in, in French there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Julie and Emily are definitely part of EPC as well. So yeah. everyone yeah. here is yeah, active. And, and uh, Emily, Andy, and I are uh, also, we have a history project in the works. So that may be part of what we're going to, uh, what we could put in there. As part I was of thinking it. about history. Something similar for history would be amazing. But I, I'm not giving people work, but it didn't. Well, yeah. no, we can definitely look into uh, look because we have a few ideas. We have a few uh, a few things in mind that we want to uh, to present to the community. We're 
we have a group that has that has started working on it. So that may be something we can put on our agenda for sure. Any tool that can be helpful, it's worth uh, looking into for sure. And as far as last week's presentation, was there any uh, anything that you wanted to me to maybe go over, or is everything okay? I think it was pretty self-explanatory. Also, last last week the translation was. Uh, you know, it was, they had put everything together. So it was really just a matter of presenting it to our, putting our colors in it. Still Sorry? No answer, still no answer for the ministry documents? The DED, no, still no. But uh, we know that they're going to keep us posted. And okay. we're crossing our fingers for the most, the, the most, po the closest possible date, uh, if it could be tomorrow, we'd be super happy, but there's <laughs> absolutely, I mean, nothing we can do but ask, and we, uh, every week or so, we go, so, any news, anything new, and only but, you know, there's nothing out there, not, you know, okay. it's still, uh, we're still waiting for it, but as soon as it's available, people will know, that's for sure. So for financial ed, we'll get a prototype exam, right? Yes, there will okay. be. And then, and then yes. people can Absolutely. give it their own flavor if it, needed. Not use it or use it for their own, uh, the, the production of their own evaluation. Yes, there will be a prototype and a DED for history then it's the DED and the ministry exam. That's a different story, but there will be evaluation tools for financial aid, yes, uh, or cool. a sample of it. Yeah, absolutely. And they should be coming out at the same time. The pro hopefully, the prototype and the DED. Again, we're crossing our fingers. If you want to look into um, approved material, the list that I sent you way back in December when I sent you the list that Madame Giraud had put together material for the youth sector uh, in financial ed there may be uh, there may be things on there that are useful you can look through the list I have to say I didn't have time to look at the list in detail did you Emily is there anything yeah, in there that can be useful there was actually I don't think they um, approved material for non like ministry exam courses so they, if it doesn't like it, directly lead to your diploma they don't even bother there were a couple of publishing houses that did have mm -hmm. um like textbooks workbooks right. in french um some were for like adapted to the adult ed curriculum some mm -hmm. were for the youth sector but i didn't find any in english mm -hmm. um oh, but i shared the padlet I shared the Padlet um, from the AGE resources site. And there's it, like, I don't think we're gonna have trouble finding stuff to use. No, that's like, there's, there's lots lot out there. there. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a matter of like sequencing and how you're gonna get all of that to fit in the, the 25 hours that's gonna mm -hmm. be. And I, I, we, the, the resources that we find, we put on there. I know you've put some on there. Uh, I have a few uh, in there as LESs or teaching materials uh, in, in one of our folders, and we try to update it as much as we can. So there should be enough material for, for teachers to go through, that's for sure. But anything supplementary or complementary is always welcome. So if you find anything that could be awesome, then just by all means, go on the Padlet and put it up. Do not hesitate. Uh, and uh, teachers shouldn't hesitate what they find. Sometimes we find little pearls and we just have no idea that it existed and just slide it on there. And it definitely will be useful. Sorry, my hand's not up. I'm bad like that. Um, the Making Sense of Finance book Hannah was just mentioning um, that is used in the youth sector very close to our program. And it's in English very beneficial, certainly for teachers looking for resources and structure. This is what a publishing is house is that? It is. Do we have uh, it? Can you put the uh, ISBN number in the <clears throat> chat of that book? The ISBN, yeah. Hannah, can you do that? You have it handy? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that right now. 
now. It's great if it's in there. Then you would ISBN number. It is a education chenelier, I think. Chenelier, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that Alex was referring to it last week when he was talking about uh, mm -hmm. uh, what he had found online. Because Alex Prince, uh, who's been working a lot, a lot on history material also uh, has found uh, a few things regarding financial education. So we're going to make sure that it's updated. So here's the ISBN right there. So that's actually, it's the student book. It's not, there's a, there's a teacher book. Okay. Um, this is the student book. Excellent. For the teacher book. For the teacher book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But sometimes having the student book you know, it really does help and you can just build from there. Uh, unless you have no idea what you're doing, normally teachers can work around that and then you can make sense of, uh, uh, you know, I know that I remember starting in the teaching world, having only student books and I would make sense of them. So I'm sure everybody can, but this is great. This is, uh, thank you very much, Hannah. That's it. As far as I'm concerned, that's it for me. I mean, that's what I wanted to focus on uh, today. I'm going to make sure that the PDF is ready, that my colleagues, uh, we go through it and my colleagues approve the PDF version. So we're ready to send it out to, uh, and we're going to send it out to members of the EPC so they can distribute it to their teachers. Um, so that should be done in about, uh, I'd say maybe a week, 10 days. And I will make sure that you receive the history PDF along with the financial education PDF so that you don't have to locate two different things. They will be in the same, uh, in the same, uh, the same invoice. Thank you for the session. <laughs> You're welcome. It was a very short one. Uh, it, it was our pleasure. And if you need anything else, let us know.